Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. And now, here is your host, the lovely, delightful, insightful, and all-around great gal, Ms. Barbara DeLong. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Night Light. Tonight we have uh, a real treat for, for me and hopefully for you. We have Dan, Dan Willis with us again tonight, and he's, his website is thewebmatrix.net forward slash disclosure and we're going to make an effort to get on another gentleman called named drew towsley I, i'm sure i pronounced that wrong both of these gentlemen i'm while while dan we are very familiar with being the conspiracy guy extraordinaire um he also had the wonderful privilege of working with marcel vogel and he was right there at the beginning and he he went and he got crystals for Marcel to facet and to utilize and Drew is the last cutter actually trained by Marcel Vogel to do the the amazing crystals that he uses for healing so welcome to the show Dan hi are you there Barbara can you hear me I can hear you can you hear me yes I can hear you sorry about that I had my mute accidentally on well, well hey. this should be an interesting show. This is uh, this is a treat. I'm going to patch uh, Drew in here really quick. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm so glad you're doing this and not me. This this is what real live radio is like, folks. You know, this is this is this is what the not quite professional people do. <laughs> so anyhow. Um, Dan worked with Marcel Vogel, and Marcel Vogel was an IBM researcher. He was a, an amazingly fascinating man, and he, he started to do research on, um, on plant and um, – let me see if I can find it. Of course, I had everything put aside here. Um, he, did, he, he did pioneering – Yes. Sorry. You know, that doesn't work with Skype apparently uh, <laughs> can can I call in and bring him in that way no um, Deb do you have his phone number I got it preloaded if you gave me the right number I gave you the right number give it a shot okie dokie you're probably going to hear it click that's okay I don't hear a click yet yeah, but, that fast. Oh, okay. I don't want to get going and then suddenly have him crop in. Um, so, good to have you here, Dan. Really glad that you're with us tonight. I can't wait to talk to you about these crystals because they fascinate me. Yeah, and the work that Marcel was doing. He was, uh, he was a scientist ahead of his time that was connecting you know, geometry and consciousness um, in a way that uh, was able to do measurable effects in the laboratory with 
you know, he was IBM's top scientist. Uh, did we get Drew on? Um, doesn't sound like it. Um, I think when when I when you gave me a lot of oops, maybe. Oh, oh maybe. Hello. Hello, oh, Drew. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll you go ahead because uh, welcome to the show, Drew. We're on the air. And, Hi. Thank you. Oh well, thank you so much for being there, and thank the, thank the cosmic gods that that we were able to get a call through. Uh, the technological <laughs> gods, right? <laughs> um, let me tell you, uh, we could use a couple of crystals here since we went beyond the crystal radios. Everything is kind of not not always working the way we think it should. But I, we've got Dan Willis here, and the two of you. Both worked with Marcel Vogel, and I'm so jealous because of beyond many things that he has been called, he was also called a mystical scientist. And I think that that name, to me, is it's what it's what is meant to happen, where where science and the mystical work together, combine and and bring out a greater awareness than either could do by themselves. Right, the scientist priest almost. Yeah. I'd like to say this is a real privilege to have you on, Drew. I've only done one other show talking on Marcel, and to have you, uh, you know, you're the last person on this planet that was personally trained by Marcel, you know, to share your, share your insights, it's a, it's a real treat. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. You know, I, for those people who don't know what, what the Vogel crystal is, um, Dan, you want to explain because you actually went to the to the salt mines to to the crystal mines in Arkansas, I think, and you selected the first crystals that he actually um, created and charged and seeded and was working with. If I'm not, am I correct? Yeah, you know, it, it might be good to give a little background. Some people don't know who Marcel Vogel is. Um, I I don't know. I. Drew, do you want to take the floor on that, or would you rather I give a little background on Marcel? Well, you probably came in a little earlier than I did, but um, I do know that Marcel had been working for IBM for 26 or so years and had been working in the development of the computers and hard drives and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, he was quite a prolific inventor, I think just because he was so intuitive. He, he w was open-minded, as you said. He was kind of had this, this spiritual dimension going on there. But he had retired from all that when he started Psychic Research Incorporated, um, which is where he started working with the crystals and putting all that out there. And uh, that, that came along later in life. I, I started working for him in 85, and he had Psychic Research already set up in San Jose, very close to where IBM was. And uh, yeah, what was brought kind of you his into his life? Playground. Well, I first heard about Marcel. Um, I was living in Illinois, and I read the book, book *The Secret Life of Plants*. And I was very intrigued when I read about him. It just sparked something in me because he was talking about doing experiments with plants, where he would create a personal relationship. He'd take a couple of leaves off a bush or a flower or something like that, and then one of them he would just ignore completely and then the other one he would develop a personal relationship and in every case the one that he was talking to and saying oh you're so beautiful and all this sort of a thing uh lasted so much longer than the other one and so he got that these these plants and biosystems are responding to our thoughts and emotions so that kind of set him i think that was what got him going down the uh Try and find for ways of amplifying the energy with the crystal and using it and developing ultimately the tools that he developed, the techniques for healing. So uh, I happened to be, I moved to California. One of my housemates uh, was doing some volunteer work for him. And when I found out about that, I was just, I kind of went through the, the ceiling. It was like, wow, this is cool. I knew about this guy. And then I got a chance to meet him. I got a chance to see him speak. And it was at the time that uh, Marcel Jr. was actually cutting the crystals. That was in 1985. And uh, they happened to need someone because Jr. joined the seminary, uh, became a Catholic priest, and they needed someone to start training cutting the crystals. So I just kind of happened along at the right time. 
and my grandpa was a rock hound, so I got a little had a little bit of experience doing some stuff with him, and just enough to kind of get my foot in the door. And uh, that, you know, the rest is that was 32 years ago, so I've been doing it ever since. Let me ask you something. I I mean, everybody probably listening has at one time or another held a crystal or 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 had a crystal that that they worked with and stuff like that but the crystals that you guys have created and utilized um are different from from just the little wands that that we pick up in in you know every metaphysical store known to man what qualities um dan did you look for when you were in in the mines looking for crystal and and drew i mean I, your your website is phenomenal, and the crystals that you have done are just absolutely beautiful. Deb is, I think, has put um, the link to your website into the into the chat room, and we'll make sure that it's it's on on when we post the show. But but, I mean, what is it you are looking for? Because these these. First of all, what were you looking for, and then how do you seed them? How do you infuse them with intent, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Well, Dan, you were there at the beginning with the looking. You might want to speak on that. Well, just getting, uh, you know, uh, clear material uh, as best as you can. They're they're cut along the C-axis, the growth axis, so you need to. But, you know, you have vastly more experience on that than I do, Drew. I'm more... okay. On the on the science, uh, you know, because I had this unusual experience, kind of an ET download. I had to find out about the scientist that was finding out the connection between consciousness and geometry, which the crystals are obviously a, a key. And so that's the part that that I got more involved in with the, uh, you know, some of that area. Right. Well, uh, primarily we're looking for optical grade material. Uh, optical grade doesn't have to be necessarily flawless, but it's uh, largely clear materials, and it can be smoky or clear quartz or uh, citrine or anything like that. They, and they all have a different quality to them. Um, crystals are energy devices, and I, in my experience, there is, you might say, a spirit or a soul with each piece. They're, they're as individual as people are. If you sit and hold different crystals, you'll get a very distinctly different vibe from them. Uh, some may be very feminine, some may be very masculine, some just intergalactic, take you way out into deep space, some just very warm and loving and earthy. So um, each crystal, I'm cutting the crystal to the best of my ability with intention, with prayer, and um, and yet, it's kind of a complex situation because, uh, you know, I'm a person, I add my energy to the process. Each crystal is distinctively different, and you're cutting it into a particular geometry that, you know, Marcel's brilliance was that he came up with this shape that focuses the energy brilliantly for using in energy, uh, healing work and stuff. So you're bringing, it all, you're bringing it all together, you're cutting it into the shape, and then you're sending it out into the world and someone else is going to interact with someone else's energy system. They're going to love it and relate to it in a certain way. And then they're going to use it therapeutically on other people. So it's, it's kind of a complex little energy dance that happens with each of these pieces. You know, I feel very fortunate to be part of that. It's really fun. Um, but basically optical grade quartz and, um, you know, you cut it as perfectly as you can, you know, as symmetrically as I can. I still cut these by hand in the same way that uh, Marcel Jr. taught me. I actually studied with Jr. with who trained me. And um, there's, you know, very few people really doing it in this fashion anymore. And, and I'm the one that uh, has continued Marcel's legacy of cutting in this particular way and these particular tools. So, yeah, yes, I'm kind of the only one really doing that now, so. I mean, you. Everybody is seeing, you know, your 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 ordinary crystals, but you have some. I mean, with with angles in them that um, are profound. I mean, when I was looking at them, I drooled. Um, and and his website is luminarystudios.com for everybody who, if you want to really see beautiful stuff and that is going to make you drool, go there, and then start saving. Mm-hmm. Um, (laughs) but, but, but what is the, the, I, I noticed that, that, you know, you can order them in, in, with different facets, with different numbers of facets. What is the, the, Mm -hmm. the, the, um, 
the difference between the different faceting? Well, the the very original Vogel crystal was a four-sided crystal. Marcel got drew the inspiration from the shape of the Tree of Life, if anyone has mm-hmm. seen that. And then uh, his intuitive stroke of genius, I think, was that of cutting the butt end angle to the Giza pyramid angle. And that's what kind of sets the tone for the whole crystal, I think. It, it right. creates a resonance, a sacred geometry resonance, you might say, with certain physical laws and, and such. So uh, we started with four sides and kind of took it from there, went to six and eight. And, and then when I came along, we started making uh, 12s and 13s. And now you can make 16s and 18s and uh, all sorts of other sides and things. And the but, purpose um, of that is to what? Does it increase the Mar- intensity? Well, Marcel's original thinking as we started doing more sides was that it created more spin to the energy. Uh, it does um, subtly color the energy flow through the piece. Um, you know, I'm partial to, like, the 13s, for example. Uh, now, I, I like what I like. I can't say that they're universally the best tool for other people. I try to encourage people to feel into it themselves for what really is best for them. But uh, I've sold a lot of the 12s and 13s, and uh, 16s and 19s now are kind of the latest thing. And oh, wow. I haven't played with them all thoroughly. I, I make the tools, I put them out in the world, and I kind of let you know other people have at it in that sense. But uh, it does color the energy flow. Um, I, I still think it's kind of a personal preference thing, what really works for you. I, Energy follows thought. If you have, if you hold certain beliefs about the crystals and the way they're going to flow, then that's kind of what's going to, what's going to happen for you. You're going to manifest that. So um, I do encourage people to kind of feel into it themselves and see what's right for them. Drew, regarding the angles, um, the I kind of call it the, the female side is a 52-degree angle and the more acute side is, is the male end or the projecting end. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the uh, I noticed it's normally a, around sixty degrees. Is there? Um, I know that Marcel was using the omega five to use the four fifty four rate of water to to determine. I'm not sure. Yeah, I wasn't involved in that process, so I'm really curious on your take on um, how do you how do you determine the uh, resonance of water with that and the individual? Is it more of a meditative type of thing? Well, yeah, honestly, I, I'm not the scientist that Marcel was. I'm, that's not been my training. I'm more of the artist type, honestly. And uh, for me, the, the butt end angle is the critical one that really uh, defines what a vocal crystal is. So I cut that as precisely as I can. And uh, the tip, uh, every crystal is different. And there, th- this is the artist part of me. Is There's kind of a, f- a feel as I go along through the piece for how sharp that tip should be. The front end tip, so that will vary somewhat in the way that I'm making the tools, and uh, so that's not quite as set as the butt end. So, so in a way, these crystals are generators. They are generators. I mean, they're the crystals are very complex things, you know. And, and I, I'll be very honest; I don't fully understand how it all works. All I know is I've had some incredible experiences with them, uh, just energetic experiences, uh, the way they um, can create a sacred space, you know, uh, which is basically just a way of connecting with God and spirit, you know, and and they're remarkable in what they can do in that sense. Um, But but I don't really, I don't fully understand everything. I I know my, my wife uses them extensively, Extensively, she's quite a, a good healer, and uh, I've seen them. I've used them so many times in so many ways, and seen what they've done that I've. I don't need any convincing that there's something rather magical going on with these, you know. But when you're talking to the layman that doesn't know anything about this, it's kind of hard to uh, communicate all that to them. But Marcel was using them for channeling. Mm-hmm. He was using them for uh, extracting energy, which is a common way of using it, where you go into someone's energy field. He developed the techniques for coming into the heart chakra or just above the heart chakra. And connecting energetically, had, he had his technique of kind of entering into a person's energy field and then ex- basically 
getting the person to breathe with them, focusing, uh, Marcel being the healer and then whoever the patient was, getting them to focus their energies and their concentration together and breathing and then releasing the energy through the crystal out. And then that's just one way that, that they can be used. But you can send energy into people. You can do distant healing with these uh you know, there is time and space is an illusion, basically. You know, God is everywhere now. And when you connect with thought and energy in that way, then uh, you, you connect with energy very deeply. You connect with people very differently, very deeply, and with spirit very deeply. And you have this sense of inclusiveness, and, that, and you can work with the, the crystals in that way. You know, it's, they're uh, quite remarkable what you can do with them, really. And I've seen results i've seen you know people have healings uh it's just rather amazing to me you know i i can testify to that as well <laughs> <laughs> well now you you use clear quartz basically but will any um because well wait rose quartz is still quartz um does it matter what color the, the crystal is, or, or is that just personal preference? Well, it's almost like music. You know, uh, each style of music has a different vibe, the rhythm, and, and every, all these different factors that define music are kind of the same with the crystals. The colors, rose quartz is generally a little more feminine and a softer energy, which in certain situations or for certain people can be just exactly what they need. Um, Smoky quartz is real grounding and uh, is very nice to wear for someone uh, in maybe a high-stress environment or something where they just kind of need to stay centered and grounded. Um, and is, smoky quartz is very good for p drawing energies and pulling energies out of things. Uh, my wife regularly uses a small Vogel 12 for her healing work. And uh, she's, it's not even a very big tool. She says it's just an amazing tool, so she uses that quite a lot. Uh, Clear, you know, people put out thoughts. There's a lot of people that say this is this and that's that, and this number of size is this, is this, and this number of size is that. But I think uh, the person using the crystal and how open minded they are, and how connected to spirit they are, and how, you know, sensitive and psychic they are, I think that all those things determine are more of an overriding factor than the number of sides of the crystal. And so who is using the tool is a very important part of the equation. Um, and the size isn't as important as people think it is. You can have a very small tool and yet still have a you know, very functional, powerful, potent little piece. So it's, it's hmm. so, so really it's something that you really want to be able to see and touch and feel the crystal before you actually pick one out. Well, uh, or have, in my case, I'm uh, the way I work mostly, and this is the way I like to work. I, I'm a, basically a make-to-order business. I like to have a little bit of a personal relationship with the person that I'm cutting for, and mm -hmm. maybe they'll send a picture, or they'll just tell me a little bit about themselves, or sometimes just their birthday or something like that, and then I can kind of take it from there, and I, I gear my prayers. You know, to me, my job is connecting with with God and bringing that intention, you know, the, the desire to help, to heal, in, you know, into the whole process. And um, if I have a personal relationship with who I'm cutting for, you know, then that's like a nice place to start. And uh, so then I'm cutting a tool specifically for you. And uh, I don't, you know, every once in a blue moon, I'll get something that comes back. But, you know, that's a very, very small. <laughs> uh, we have a question we have a question from the chat room. Does it matter where the quartz comes from, like compared to Arkansas or Herkimer? Does it matter where the the, the stone itself originates from? Yeah, that's 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 a good good question. Actually, um, I've cut quartz from uh, the the Ural Mountains in Russia. I've cut Madagascar quartz. I've cut a lot of Brazilian quartz. That's mostly what I've been cutting, and I've cut Arkansas quartz, which is perhaps what Dan originally was buying from Marcel in the early days. Right. And they all do have a different vibe. It's, uh, it's hard to explain this exactly, but uh, there is a little, you hold the different pieces, there are different, uh, like the Madagascar quartz, for example, is a little softer. It's always felt a little fem more feminine to me. Brazilian is pretty balanced overall. Uh, and the, the crystal that I'd cut from the Ural Mountains was really gorgeous stuff too. 
Um, they all have a little different vibe, you know, but we're all, <laughs> the thing is we all come from the same place. You know, we're all spirit. We all come from that same thing. So there, there is a commonality in all of them. And because of their molecular structure and such, you know, there is, they all work basically in the same sort of a way, but they will have a little different character and energetically uh, a signature, you might say, to them. Have you ever you have you ever cut like a Herkimer into a Vogel di- uh, crystal? I have It'll, never done that. Uh, It'll come that <laughs> big, Barbara. <laughs> no, I've got one that's pretty big. A yeah, Herkimer? Been, yeah. Oh. About the, about the size of your fist. That's big. <laughs> that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, that would be big enough to cut. No, I've I've not cut those at all. I, I do like them, but I haven't seen anything big enough for me to cut in that respect. So, wow, I I because there is such a clarity in the Herkimers that uh, you know, I I would think that that would be, you know, a, a good candidate. But I mean, the 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 pictures on your website are just are just breathtaking. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, know, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was just going to inject, you know, for the listeners that why he cut it in a particular way. Marcel was looking to uh, get more of a more of a precise effect rather than what is normally grown in nature is pretty much wild. They they grow in left and right hand turn spirals, and they take all different varieties of forms, but they all come up with a 52 degree angle. And what he was doing from a, uh, inspired from a, a vision he had in a dream to cut it in the tree of life was in the tree of life, you have like sort of the unmanifest God in, you could say at the very top, which is the 52 degree angle that drew cuts. And then you have it coming it down into manifestation at the bottom of the tree of life, which is more of the projecting uh, male end, you could say. And so Mm -hmm. the idea was that, uh, like Marcel always used to say to me, that these sciences we're studying are akin to those in physics. And I have a pretty good science background. And what he was uh, trying to accomplish was, and looks like he did, was uh, it's like a laser where you have two mirrors and you excite the medium between the two mirrors and it reflects back and forth. And the mirrors are such that they, every every uh, s- sequential uh, reflection builds upon itself so that the, uh, the power that's within a laser, uh, one mirror is 100% reflective, the other one's uh, 99%. So that 1% that comes out is so powerful it can cut through steel. So why that is is because it's forming the energy in a coherent manner. So when the crystals cut the way Drew cuts them, what it does is it takes the energies of mind and puts it into a coherent form so that the intention, uh, and, and the way Drew cuts them, he cuts them on the C axis. So it's right in the C axis, the growth axis, the energy spirals through that. And so it, it's sort of a, uh, a multi-dimensional laser transducer of some sort. I don't know what you would, you would call it, but uh, that's the reason why, uh, why the form is cut like that. Now, I, I have a question now. I, I noticed that there were uh, crystals that grew uh, on a left spiral and a right spiral. What's the difference, aside from the one's left and one's right? There has to be an energetic dis- difference as they grow on a left spiral or a right spiral. Yes, and I don't know if that's based on location or how they, you know, how they grow within the the matrix that they're growing in. I, I don't really have a hit on that. Do you, do you have anything about that, Dan, at all? You know, that's a good question. You know, I've never heard that question asked before. You know, if it's a, uh, you know, if there's a better effect from a left or right hand spiral, they definitely do. You can see on the facets where the the way the crystal grows if it's a left or right hand spiral. But well, the reason I, the reason I asked is because. With us, you receive from the left and you send from the right. 
so that mm-hmm. so that if I was going to if, if it had if there was something like that, one is a better receiver, one is a better sender, then I would want someone that I would want one that had a right hand spiral because then then that would be you know more um, in, in in greater what's the word in greater synchronicity to what I was if I'm sending out and I have a crystal that was grown with that you know focus then that would gr- more greatly intensify it if that was the case yeah it's, it's an excellent yeah. question actually it, it is uh the crystals can be used in many different ways though i don't uh, i mean you can use them for sending receiving uh, channeling as i said with marcel there there are different techniques uh, i don't know that they're limited to one or the other I, I kind of understand your concept of using something that amplifies if you're intending to use it in a particular sort of a way. I've cut so many crystals, and g- granted, I don't have a scientific way of really measuring the power of them, but it, just my intuitive hit is that there's a negligible difference when you cut, you know, when you're basically having the crystal conform to the vogel shape or, or another shape, you know. Uh, I don't see any significant difference in the way that the crystal is projecting energy or anything. So, but that's uh, again, it's not really a scientific evaluation. <laughs> say, yeah. So. yeah, Marcel used both uh, with success. So, uh, you know, the one thing that's common is is that it's uh, the quartz structure is universal. Um, right. Right. Well, and you know, it, it takes you back to sacred geometry too. And um, but there's no left and right with sacred geometry. That's that's why I was wondering because it, it's it's so very specific that they grow, you know, either in a left hand spiral or right hand spiral. And it may be random. Um, it probably is, but I would suspect that energetically people are 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 drawn to or relate to something if it's meant to be utilized by them. It's a special feeling, like like your wife who has the small, the small smoky that she uses. It's it's you know you get you get a connection to a crystal, and you you don't know why. You just know that that's yours, that's mine, and it mm-hmm. works for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's a knowingness, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, it's the connection, the internal connection. That's that's important. Uh, you do develop a personal relationship with the tools. Uh, uh, Marcel used to say that crystals were telephones for God, and I always loved mm-hmm. the minute I heard that. It was like I like this guy, uh, and you know, it's a it's a way of connecting with spirit. And spirit is everywhere, as I said before, everywhere now. So it's uh, it gives this immediacy when you're using the tools in that fashion, an immediacy and a sense of really connecting deeply with these people and things which I really, really like. And I, I haven't noticed any limitation, as I say, in the different crystals. Uh, I'm going to have to start paying more attention to that, I guess, as I'm cutting it. <laughs> we see that. Well, yeah, I would just wonder if, if, you know, some people are more drawn to the right-handed spirals and some more to the left, and that doesn't mean anything, you know, unless you can, you know, take it, you know, three or four steps further. But um, mm-hmm. since since it's there and it was in the material I read, I figured it meant something. But maybe that is yet to be discovered. It could be. <laughs> the only thing I've I've heard about the right or left hand spiral is when Marcel was working with converting a, a rot cut wine into a California award winning wine, where he took. A, uh, seven right-hand turns, not left-hand, but right-hand turns of the wine around a crystal that he, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't involved when this particular part of the lab was, was doing this work, but he was able to take the uh, vibrational essence of a fine finished wine and by circulating the wine uh, around the crystal, is that like the crystal was inducing into the water structure of the wine the vibrational essence that he programmed into it and it converted the wine and so exactly the, he incredible. was using a, a teak he was using a teak wood box uh, because teak has a high silica content in it and that was helping to create a resonant chamber that was what he was doing it was a winery in morgan hill california can't remember the name of it anymore but um I actually got to, I was around for that, uh, and I got to taste some of the samples that he was doing. 
Oh my God! And in every in every case, it was very obvious that which had been treated and which had not. And uh, I felt like there was improvement. It was as if the treated wine had been aged somehow. It wasn't that I liked necessarily every wine that was treated, but uh, it, it was very obvious that it had been treated. So I, I would say it was a successful experiment in that sense. And even one of the columnists for the uh, San Francisco Chronicle, one of the wine columnists, uh, got some samples of that and wrote it up in the, in the Chronicle, which was interesting. But, well, he also did that experiment with, with programming a crystal to stay pure, and then he put it in a glass of orange juice, I believe, and, and then he had a glass that... Um, did not have a crystal in it and and he swished it around seven times to the right and set it down and the um glass with with the crystal that had been treated with the crystal remained pure for months while the other one got dry and cloudy and funky and moldy the one that that right. had been treated with the crystal remained it it had been programmed to stay pure and it stayed pure that sounds like an extension of his work with the plants. Um, uh -huh. I, to, to me, you know, his legacy for me personally uh, that has really made a difference for me is that he re was really showing that thoughts and emotions are things. They have an effect on the people around you. They have an effect on the plants and, you know, the, the energy state of those around you. And then he's created this tool for showing people and, and for actually uh, – you know, doing healing work and things like that and creating sacred space. You know, if you have crystals in the room and you place them, you you, you kind of get a sense for, oh, this works here, this works here, and it, it helps to really uh, create a stable energy environment for yourself. You know, we have a lot of crystals in our home, and I can't imagine what this place would be like without them because they're, they're a very active, lively presence here. But uh, the, just that thoughts and emotions are things, you know, uh, and they affect the world around us. They, uh, it's what generates our life, you know, our thoughts are what generate our lives and our relationships and, you know, how successful or unsuccessful we are in our life. And um, so I try to bring that integrity and intention of the intention of healing in this because that's what, to me, is honoring Marcel's original intention. You know, it was, a, it was about helping the world, helping people to help themselves, basically, because healing ultimately becomes a self-healing act, I think. Well, I think and I think one, one, of the other, one of the other things that, that, you know, was one of the things that he put out there is that love is our primary responsibility and it's the power, it's the power in the universe that keeps matter in form. And the element of love is really so important because, and, and you know, that's, that's one of my primary um that's one of my dogmas <laughs> and 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 is it's just i think it's it, we're coming into a time when people need to understand that that it is the intent of their thoughts and the love within them that creates the reality that they are in right right and a big personal responsibility. That's why we have to stop blaming everyone else for our <laughs> the life that's not working. You know, we've got to look look back at ourselves. Point you there. you've got it. And and you know, I think so many people today. I mean, if you say to them you need to work on yourself, they kind of give you this deer in the headlight look. But but you know, if they had a crystal that they could they could charge, that they could work with, that they could use as a tool to get into themselves and work on themselves, um, that probably would be an amazing tool for someone to have because some people need to have a physical object to work with to believe that something is happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I agree with that. Um, the, the thing is, the crystal, you know, when I first got into this, I didn't know much about it, and... Uh, it took me a while to get to the point where I could sit down and, and really feel into each one and feel how distinctively different they were. Uh, for me, I, I really got this when I, when I was working for Marcel. I was working at his garage in San Jose. I like to joke that I knew his dog better than he did because I was hanging around with his dog all day long. But I, I'd be, I was making a lot of vocal sixes and a vocal eights at that time. And um, I after I cut each piece, I'd go into the little laundry room that was next to the garage, and I'd just sit for a few minutes with each piece. And that was where I 
I really got how distinctively different, even though I was cutting a lot of eights, everyone would feel a little bit different, you know. So I kind of was able to fine-tune some of my sensory mechanism, if you will, and I got to see how really different these are. But uh, you, you develop a personal relationship with the tool that you get in that sense. And um, it, it, people just need to uh, be willing to get over that little area, the gray zone of not knowing, you know, and, and to really experience what these are about. And, and if they're open and they ask and they will receive, you know, that's kind of the way it works with these. Oh, yeah. And, and going from from intellectual stuff to feeling something is is a big step for a lot of people um when people heal it's it's actually you're acting as a facilitator for the person because the person um is actually doing the healing uh but you're assisting it by you know going in and amplifying it making it more apparent so that they can lock their mind in on what the uh, what the problem is, and then you know through the breath technique that Marcel used, um, I, I've seen amazing things. You know, the first time I drove up through a storm to see Marcel at his home, uh, I opened the door. It was late at night. Uh, he had me sit down on the couch, and there was a doctor sitting on the couch. Uh, and turned off the lights for about a half hour. Played classical music. And then uh, I got up and I said, you know, to Marcel, I said, yeah, I've, I've heard about your work. I'm fascinated to learn, you know, what, 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 what you're, uh, what you're doing. Uh, and you know, he invited me to to work with him. Uh, later that evening, a woman came, knocked on the door with her daughter. The daughter had this. Uh, they they heard that he was doing healing work with a crystal, and the daughter had a protrusion about half to three quarters of an inch on her ankle and the doctor and I were sitting on the couch watch Marcel do the procedure this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this um, it actually dematerialized in front of our eyes uh, that tumor um, and it <laughs> left a lasting impression with me and so uh, that's how I initially uh, got involved, but all this was evoked from a um, this uh, interesting Kundalini ET download experience of uh, the relationship of consciousness and geometry that left this uh, burning desire to try to understand what this connection with this, and then the crystals definitely seem to exemplify that interface between consciousness and uh, and geometry. Well, it certainly does. I mean, you, you had an ET dream experience. Marcel woke up with the tree of life from a dream and then tried to replicate it in crystal. Um, I got geometrical patterns in my sleep and I put them down in paintings so that I think that I, I do feel that we get to a level of consciousness where we are where where more is made available to us than we understand initially and we are then driven to understand what it is we're seeing and feeling which is which is a great thing to happen mm -hmm. sort of the interdimensional qualities of life yeah uh, emerging, uh, in geometry and shapes and things like that colors and sounds uh, somewhat akin to the the yogic experience and you know the the masters of the Orient. Um, ultimately, I don't think you need to have a crystal to do all this stuff. I think you can get to a place where you just, you know, your mind is, you're so focused, you're so clear, you're so connected with spirit and who you are in the depths of yourself that you just can kind of direct the energy and do things yourself. I think the great masters have done that. But Having a nice tool. <laughs> yes, you could walk yeah. to the store to get your groceries, but boy, it's certainly nice to have a car, isn't it? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's a good augmentation. A nice tool, yes, and the, having a tool to focus the energy, you know, uh, if you're doing any sort of global healing work and things like that. Um, I know a lot of people that use the crystals, Reiki energy, for example, with the crystals. It's a really wonderful marriage 
and I've done some work with that too. You know, we've had all these in California. We've had all these fires and things like that going on out here. So there, I know of people that do their global healing work, uh, and having a crystal as part of the ritual of that. And um, I don't know. It's 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 all connected with all these yeah. the geometries and things that we're seeing as you're, well, you guys are seeing. Yeah, no, it becomes a focus, and it's 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 a wonderful focus. It's kind of like having your own magic wand, and and it, it multiplies I, absolutely. It's like um, you know, I I was a I was a broadcast engineer, so I you know what Marcel used to say about the science being akin. Well, in uh, everybody's familiar with what harp looks like up there in uh, in Alaska. <laughs> What that is is a phased antenna array. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, in electronics, they have many different examples of phased arrays, and a, and a quartz lattice structure, the tetrahedral array, is in perfect alignment with each other. And so, what happens in in the world of broadcasting is that each element rebroadcast the next, rebroadcast the next, so you get like a 3 dB gain for every one, and you get this enormous amount of power. Uh, and I think Marcel had an acute observation that these laws are akin to the laws in physics that we know, uh, and that it, it does, uh, does have its tendency to amplify, and it could be amplifying positive or negative. It, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a universal. Yeah, it's an energy. I mean, energy is energy. But but I, I think the fascinating thing about all of this, and, and again, you know, please check out this guy's website because it's just gorgeous. Um, it, it's, it's amazing how, you know, the crystals, uh, what's wonderful about it is the crystals are something solid you can put in your hand. And so many people need to have something they can hold touch, you know, and 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 just feel it warm to their to their body temperature and everything. Um, but but the reality is, um, you know, we're seventy percent water, and and the water crystalling crystallizing um, become crystals, so that we are a walk and talk and crystal ourselves. And and it's 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 sort of like once you go to the point where you have this focus tool that, that really is amplifying the crystalline structures within your body and, and focusing them out because it is a tool. It has an energy of its own, but when you put your energy into it, it, it so greatly enhances everything that it's amazing. It's a powerful tool. It's almost like um, we're c computers in a sense, you know, that uh, we hold these programs and using the crystal, you can, you can reprogram yourself by amplifying the things that you want to have there. And you can, uh -huh. also, you can also delete programs, delete files. And I think Marceau, was, his original intent was kind of more of about deleting files and uh, pulling out log jams, like if energy would get stuck. Uh, the example he told me was like, okay, so you, you, were, you got mad at your parents you know, 20 years ago about something and you never really forgave them for it. Well, you're, you're still holding that program in yourself, in that emotional and mental program, that charge in your energy field. We are human energy systems. You know, we, yes, we have this body here, but we extend beyond that in all these uh, different levels of, and different types of energies. So the thought and emotional energy are one of those fields. So you're holding that in your field. He, he developed the tool to come into that field and create a, that key, cohesive laser-like, as Dan said, uh, beam of energy to break up that patterns, and then you can remove it and let go. So healing is really more about creating a free flow of energy through your system. You know, you're not angry, you're not mad at the world, you're not feeling guilty, you're not, you know, feeling mad because, hey, that guy cut me off. You know, you just... You're in the moment, you let it go, you see it, you witness it, and you just keep moving, you know. And uh, just being aware of the beauty of life in every moment, you know. And that, to me, that's what the, the enlightened state is. It's not a place, it's just uh, you're here, you're present, you're flowing free, you're engaging fully with all of life around you and within you. And, mm -hmm. and Marcel's intent was to create a tool that helps us to come back to that place. And uh, that's 
you know one of the great values I think that the crystals have. And then they they also resonate in a, in a pure sort of sort of a way. It's it's a resonant device that you can relate to yourself um, like a good piece of music. You know you hear. Uh, a nice Bach, you know, concerto or something like that, and it puts you in a certain sort of a place. It's the same thing with the crystal. You can sit and meditate with it, and it, it creates this resonant uh, activity or engagement within yourself with it, and puts you in a nice place so that you can be in a peaceful place in your life. You know, and it's, to me, it's that free flow, that being fully present here in this moment with everything that's going on around you, that's you know the enlightened way and uh, we have many great teachers here on the planet at the moment you know teaching about this stuff the power of now you know uh byron katie uh lots of people that are really telling you they talk about this place and the crystal is just a, another tool to help you get to this place you know where you're just fully alive and here now so and so many people just can't sit and and be there but if they have something they can focus on that takes them there, it, it's, it makes it easier. Right. Well, there's so many stimulants, you know, TV, uh, you know, so many things to distractions, you know, weapons of mass distraction or cell phones and things like that. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so uh, it's important, you know, if you want to be healthy, you know, you need to learn what you need to, to to be there, you know, what makes mm -hmm. you happy? Uh, is it doing some yoga? Is it doing some Tai Chi? Or is it sitting and meditating with your crystal? Is it playing with your dog? You know, what, what is it that gets you there? And then taking, taking the time to take care of yourself is an important part of life, I think. And, uh, well, you it, certainly... And, uh, that's you excellent know, the inner advice. Landscape, the inner landscape is... Uh, where what generates the outer landscape so if you're not taking care of the inner landscape then your life may end up you know reflecting it will end up mm -hmm. reflecting that i think yeah i, I want to add one more time we're gonna shortly hear some music and there will be a three to five minute break but i want to once again say your website is luminarystudios.com and and, and barbara you gave my my other website with uh you know my disclosure stuff. Um, I did put a site up, marcelvogel.org, uh, just some uh, notes that, uh, you know, sharing information, what I learned with Marcel uh, mm -hmm. for others and, uh, you know, links to Drew and, and others that are, that are carrying on Marcel's research and work. Yeah, he, um, I mean, his work was fascinating. And, and, you know, in the second hour, I really want to get into some of it because, um, he was an amazing man way before his time. Um, but I like the fact that he was a scientific mystic or a mystical scientist, whichever way you want to go. Because, I mean, that to me is, is, is just the blending of two modalities that haven't looked at each other for a very long time. Yeah, and sort of need, really needed sorely right now, of course, on this planet, so... Oh, I would say so. And and I do believe that the the crystals, I mean, the pyramid shape for one thing is is something that is all over the planet and I don't think we're recognizing what the pyramid actually means. You know, we see it and it's a pyramid and yeah, yeah, I know what a pyramid is and then the reality is it's 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 an indicator, it's an aim, it's a, a way to focus an energy. And um, what, where was that energy coming from and how was it, where was it being directed? And uh, I think we have a lot of work to do on, on understanding some of the antiquities that are out there that, that we've misinterpreted greatly. Yeah, well, the the pyramid, such as the pyramid in Egypt, is also coincidentally 52 degree angle, just like quartz grows naturally, and the pyramid has mathematics that go into the golden mean ratio, which basically is the nature of this uh, hollow fractal universe that goes into infinity. Um, and I think uh, it's like a um, it's like the octaves of 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 life, you know, coming up to the apex, the the, uh, the very top of the crystal. Dan, you were you were gifted with one of the first of his crystals, as I as I recall. 
Uh, he he was making them for um, about two dozen medical doctors in the Bay Area, and <laughs> some pretty interesting uh, interactions with them. Yeah, he uh, he made one as a gift, which I will always treasure. It's one of the early four-sided ones, and uh, um, <laughs> I remember going back on the plane to San Diego, and here was this football player sitting next to me, holding his knee in pain. And I said, well, I thought, well, you know, this is an opportunity, you know, the, 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 what Marcel was you know, sharing with me on the techniques and everything. And uh, I said, well, I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor. I'm more of an uh, experimental scientist, you could say. If we'd like, we could try some unconventional techniques, you know, on your, on your you know. So we did the breathing and the pulse and the release and all that with him. He got off the plane, and you know he did this, not me. You know, it's like I was facilitating it. But he said, uh-huh. "That guy he cured me. My my leg doesn't hurt anymore." You know, so Ooh. I was like, I was like delighted that the principles that Marcel taught, you know, had a had a <laughs> in the real world an an effect. I was like, I was, uh, you know, I used it probably. Mm-hmm probably up to about 200 times on different situations, broken bones and back problems. And um, I think the crystals are excellent for people who do visualization, you know, like for visualizing the world to be, you know. But I think anything that you do in love, the thing that set Marcel apart from the other scientists is that he looked into the the scientific significance of, of love. You know, one of his quotes is, uh, quote, the love is the glue of the universe that helps keep matter in form. When I love you, I empower you to bring yourself into a state of wholeness. And he used to say, our primary responsibility is the love. Because whenever healing was happening, whenever you go in, it, the body is like a uh, recording device. And... And the bones and things especially, you know, hold, store energy. So when you go in and you pull a program out, you can't just pull something out without letting it fill back in. That's why it was important in the healing process that, you know, you, the person breathed love in, in for themselves. And, you know, love is, uh, you know, like Dr. Emoto's, you know, frozen uh, you know, photos that it is more in alignment with the matrix of the universe, uh, mm-hmm. and and crystals are are very similar to water, uh, in that they are both universally resonant. You know, as they dig down in Antarctica, they found all the major crystal crystallographic classes of geometry that can be uh, manifested in water, meaning it's a universal. Uh, resonant substance and uh, in the laboratory they found that uh, the intermolecular bonding angles and things like a quartz has a as a 52 degree angle and water has uh, you know 26 and 104 and a half I think but it's like the sum and difference of 52 which means that there's sort of a angular harmonic resonance going on of an information exchange like in electronics, when you have a radio transmitter transmitting on one frequency, you're going to have frequencies that are half that and frequencies that are double that and so forth across the spectrum. Those are called harmonics. And uh, it seems that the, uh, the molecular structures of water and quartz have this... Uh, geometry that has this uh, you know this is like most ancient cultures that are f- widely separated over time that all have these similar attributes to this clear you know clear stone so to speak mm-hmm. uh, meaning that there, there was already an understanding there was something special about the clear quartz but it wasn't able to be scientifically substantiated which is what you know Marcel was able to do in the laboratory now, let me ask you something. The, the old radios used to be called quartz radios. Did they have <clears throat> quartz? I mean, crystal, in crystal radios. Crystal radios, yeah. Yeah. Did they have uh, quartz crystals they, in them? They used a cat whisker on a, uh, I think it was a germanium crystal, and it acted basically as a diode that took the radio waves off of a, you'd have to have a big long antenna on it, and it would pick up the. Uh, 
you know, it would pick up the radiation that's in the air, and then it would, you could hear it with, a, with some headphones because it would uh, basically uh, decode it, so to speak, so you could hear the radio station. Well, that would make it, it seems so, so much more logical to me then that a quartz crystal will help you to hear what your spirit is trying to tell you if you only would but listen. Well, well, spirit works on a on a far vast multi dimensional level where you know these electromagnetic frequencies that are using for you know radio they use a, you know in radio and computers you know as a time based oscillator because they're very mm-hmm. very precision you know I was a kid as a ham radio operator I used to take a piece of quartz and grind it on my mother's mirror with some toothpaste in order to change the frequency. And the crystal would then change on a different frequency as I as I made it smaller. It went up in frequency, and uh, I'd be operating on a different frequency band. So it's a it's a very precise um, oscillation that happens within the crystal. Yeah, I just I I think that that you know a long time ago everybody had a crystal they wore around their neck, and then and then it kind of. It went away, and and people today are now um, working working with crystals again, more so than ever before. And, and and I'm actually teaching gem casting using crystals and gemstones and stuff like that. That you know there wasn't an interest in 20 years ago. So I think it's cyclical, I, and I I think people are coming more and more and more into understanding how they can be used. And, and I think it's very important that we get out there the, the, the Vogel material so that people understand just, just how precious they can be and how, how great a tool they can be. Um, one of the things that, that interested me was that he, he, he discovered that, that thoughts were more, more heavily, deeply, powerfully, however you want to put it, implanted if you did it with an exhale through your nose as opposed to want to explain that a little bit if you can well you, one of the things you need to understand about Marcel is even though he was a, a very dev- devout Catholic and, and he was that's a, a important aspect of his being I think is that he was also uh, very open to studying the Eastern traditions and uh, had books on yoga and things like that. He had uh, friends and teachers who were yoga masters and such. And so he, even in his workbook, if you look through, uh, he had a workbook that he put together at one time. Uh, you know, he talks about the chakras and he talks about breath techniques and things like that. And, you know, breathing out is, uh, of course, has been around for thousands of years with the, the yoga masters, you know, focusing the breath. And they, they had all sorts of breathing techniques for doing various things in the body. And uh, Marcel just picked up on all that stuff. You know, he was very uh, open-minded, you know, in a, way, in a way that most, uh, at least at that time, perhaps other scientists weren't necessarily. And I think that's one of uh, was one of his gifts that he would just try things and he would experiment with it and uh, see what was working and what wasn't working. But the bre- breath was an important part of his healing process. I know very much so. Yeah, it fascinated me because I, um, you know, I certainly have worked with that and stuff like that. But you just, he appeared to be such a professional scientist just from what I, you know, I've only seen videos, obviously. And and to, um, it, it was a delight to see somebody who had that kind of a background actually being comfortable with the spiritual side of, of, of everything. It just, you know, it was such a pleasure to see. You know, the, the Very breath. Much so. oh, go ahead. Go ahead, <laughs> No, go ahead. Go, please. <laughs> oh, I was just, I was just going to say, um, you know, the breath came out of the, the plant research. You know, when he, uh, when he had to do a creativity course to the engineers, he read Cleve Baxter's work of the plants, and he thought this is garbage and threw it in the trash. And he thought, oh, this is going to be a good creativity. So he set up a split lift leaf philodendron and he burned the leaf and the plant on the script chart recorder squiggled you know on the chart 
And then he, as soon as the thought formed in his mind, the moment the thought formed, it, it squiggled. And he said that squiggle changed his life. And so, you know, he, he did this from a di different, different distances. He did it from seven miles away, then 14 miles away. Then he did it all the way on the, on the other side of the planet from Prov Czechoslovakia with a colleague in the lab and was able to, and he said that the inverse square law of distance doesn't apply to the energies of mind. It's like instantaneous. And um, what he found was uh, doing pranayama yoga, uh, breathing, is that when uh, with the breath, he got a much more pronounced effect. And when he, uh, it's almost like, a, you know, the martial arts, uh, when they go, you know, hey, you know, like that. It's like this, this energy that comes out, but you, you channeled it through uh, a pulse through the breath. Uh, it got a much more profound effect. And so he incorporated that into his use with the crystals uh, in healing. That's brilliant. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, I breathing is important. Um, well, it's obviously important, but but it does it does it does kind of give you a you know if you're if you're going to be sending something out to send it out with an exhale makes makes a lot more sense to me than to send it out with an inhale. Mm -hmm. yeah. The breath is connected to a multi-dimensional transfer of energy. When you're breathing in, there's not just oxygen molecules that you're bringing in your body. You're bringing in energy into your Spirit into quality. your field. Mm -hmm. And when you exhale, you're you're sending it on out. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, it just to me, it it um, it makes a great deal of sense to have at first a tool to utilize. Um, I mean, I channel, and you know, I created the cards, and I've done hundreds of of personal mandalas for people, and patterns always came to me, and having. Now that I think back, there, there, there have been times when I did have, I, I always have crystals around me. I mean, that's, that's just a given. Um, but, but the times that I had, especially at the Herkimer, the Herkimer and I had a really good relationship. And, it, you know, it, it, it kind of helped me to focus and and when I came to a brick wall, it was like, let me just see. I, I, I not that I equate myself with Nostradamus because I don't, but he 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 focused into a a um, either a dark mirror or or a bowl of water. And I found that looking into a crystal, I have a crystal ball that's a quartz crystal. I've never seen anything in it, but but it is a, a it is something to gaze into. To find peace, tranquility, and and you know that 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 momentary isolation from the world around you, and and by doing that, you clear the way for information to come from the spirit that you carry within. So, um, so I would imagine that his crystals are have a similar quality about them if that's what you're going to do. Yes, I again. I don't really fully understand the mechanism of that, but uh, coming to a place of stillness and and kind of clear, clearing out the pipes, as you say, is kind of the the first step to channeling and and being getting clarity. You know, uh, being open to insight and connecting with spirit. Um, so in that sense, uh, the, the crystal can be invaluable. It just is something to focus on. Marcel would have you focus on the crystal. And just breathe with it and do things like that uh, as a first step. Well, so many people are afraid that they won't they won't get anything if they put themselves <laughs> in that place. You know, what happens if I'm there and nothing happens? And and as you believe, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the reality is that the longer you're there, the more you get. You just mean it doesn't, it's not a telegram, you know, it comes in subtle ways and, and learning how to catch the subtleties as they flow to you is, is, is a gift and a talent and something that, that you're constantly working on because spirit doesn't use the same method more than once. I don't think, but that's the art of life, I think, is being open and, and paying attention in the moment to seeing how you're being directed and guided. And as you go along, 
you know, through your day-to-day activities. And um, you, the more uh, open you are, the more you're paying attention to the little signposts and little things, oh, go this way, go that way, meet this person, meet that person, you know, and then life becomes a little bit of a dance, you know, which is and kind of a, a game, you know. And I think God likes that game. <laughs> I yeah. think the, you know the, the crystals can can help to open us up to that part of ourselves, you know, where we're a little more um, carefree, a little more uh, just in the moment, and just smiling, you know, just yeah. I, I call I call that the cosmic dance of creation, um, yeah. Yeah. because it is so full of joy. It's unbelievable, and I think that's what's missing in most people's lives today. To tell you the truth, it's laughter and joy, and if you have those two things, then everything else really does fall into place. Um, Possibly not the way you want it to, but it does fall into the place it's supposed to be, and that's the important part. Marcel used to say, man is made in the image and likeness of God, and therefore we create, you know, and we're creating every moment, every thought we think, every uh, emotion we feel. Um, it's, it's creative, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, what I find is when you're ready to work with a crystal um it it moves things quickly it's almost as though it uh uh, for example um if you want to have really lucid dreams i've been experimenting with this for years put a large put a large crystal uh somewhere near your head so it doesn't fall on you of course Mm -hmm. uh when you sleep at night you'll find that uh the dreams seem to kick up a notch in um and being more lucid and more colorful um, when uh, it, it seems that crystals are like a conduit, you know, and if, if you've, you know, good or bad, you know, if you're ready to move forward and, uh, and utilize that creative power within you and know that, uh, know that you have to know the power of, within you. You have to know the interconnectedness and that, you know, each one of us is connected to everyone else, actually, in a uh, kind of a uh, a fractal element of of a larger consciousness. And so when you uh, connect into a crystal and you visualize, like, I like to, um, (laughs) I did this visualization on, you know, the webmatrix.net called Imagine This, where you imagine the world, once you understand the mechanisms of the world that's going on in the world, uh, how, how to transform it by seeing, um, seeing the elements uh, that you want to see in the world, the, the type of world that you want to live that's in your heart, to see that and visualize that in its totality and use your breath with a crystal, I believe is a, is a powerful uh, augment to uh to visualization okay well I, i've got a question for both of you okay. you've you've both had an amazing experience being connected to and involved with um a genius who took consciousness to another level now every generation builds upon the generation that that has that, that comes before it so so he was a generation, and you guys are both, because he's done. Um, you guys are now the next generation. So taking what you've learned from him, where are you building it to go beyond him? Because that's your obligation. Well, that's an excellent question. Well, I know Drew and myself, speaking for myself, you know, we're getting up there in age, you know. So the listeners out there that are the future crystal researchers. No, uh, no, no, no. You are the next generation. You are not Mo- Vogels. It's you. You've got the information, the work, and where are you taking it next? And, and Drew, where are you taking it next? Because it's your obligation to put another level into this work somehow. Well, thank goodness Drew is making these instruments. Uh, you know, I mean, nobody else is is doing it at the level that he's doing. 
Yeah, I got uh, that, but that but he's still making Vogel, Vogel crystals. When does he transcend it and take it to another level? And you, well, I I, I don't make disc Vogels. I have my own designs as well. You know, that okay. out there as well. Mm-hmm. But I I you know I have an artistic temperament, as I said before, and that's uh, my instinct is to want to create and do that. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, I decided long ago that the tools are what are really needed here. You know, healing is what is needed on the planet, and healing is just people waking up to who they really are, and that we're not victims. Yes. In, you know, we're we're not victims. You know, there's no one else has power over us unless we give it away to them. So, exactly. these crystals are tools for cutting through the old programming and stuff. And as such, I've, you know, I've had a commitment for all these years to continue making the tools because. Uh, no, I'm not the one out there teaching people how to use them, but they need to have the quality tool, you know, to do the type of work, the freeing work. So in that sense, I feel like I'm just kind of carrying Marcel's work forward in that sense. Uh, I'm not a scientist per se, as I said, but I I like to think that I'm uh, an aware individual with, you know, deep spiritual inclinations and, and awarenesses, and as my wife is, and... I'm, uh, you know, t- teaching people, as I said, the crystal is, is a tool. You know, we are the masterpiece. Uh, we as individuals are the masterpiece. Uh, the collective sun, the collective Krishna, you know, however you want to see it. Uh, and our work is really realizing truly who we are, you know, as as part of this vast being, as Dan was saying. You know, we're all cells of that part being, and we're all connected, and we are all need to have a commitment to our uh, total health and well-being, you know, and, and the crystals are a tool for go- doing that. Uh, I'm just trying to be in as pure and clean and present place as I can be myself, and to do this work and you know that in the hopes that other people will get it too and and i think they are you know from the feedback that i'm getting in the world um people are getting it and uh i think we're at a kind of a tipping point on the planet right now where yes there's a lot of stuff you could look at in the media and political situations and stuff that are kind of ugly and intense and uh, create anxiety but there's also a lot of grassroots waking up going on underneath that that people may not be aware of and i think it's you know us holding to truth and spirit and love as marcel was saying you know love is in fact i can't even quote he says god's love is the force that keeps matter in form and um the, the, the matter is our our lives that we're creating for ourselves and the world that we're creating around us. So if the more we hold to that, you know, simple commitment to being the best we can be and treating other people in the best fashion that we can and creating the best world that we can, I, I think that's the work right now. And I, we are at a tipping point, and it's, things may get kind of intense, but... Uh, We've got the tools now where we need to kind of step up and go, no, you know, I want, I, this country was based on freedom. We were created to be free, creative beings, and we need to stand for that and mm-hmm. and, and not let, give our power away to others. And the, the crystals are tools for empowering, for healing, you know, and healing okay. is just about getting to <clears throat> back to the present. So Now, now you, learn, you learn from Marcel and Marcel Jr., right? Are you, uh, are junior, you, yes. Okay. Are you training anybody to go beyond you? Uh, not presently. I've I've had employees. I've done that whole thing. And I, at this point in my life, I like to work by myself mostly. I, I run the business myself, and my, me and my wife do. And uh, that when it's ready, you know, once when I need to do that, I will. You know, but right now, I just like. Uh, to having my own space and, and doing my thing. I can, I can relate to that. And yeah. and Dan, Dan, now Dan, you've got websites up all over the place and, and you put information out there like crazy. Um, this too. <laughs> <laughs> this too, yes. Um, my, my other hat I wear, you know, being a top secret military witness on the extraterrestrial issue, but it's all interconnected when you uh, look oh. at the big picture. Of course it is, but but you know this is this is an aspect of you that until you pointed me in this direction. I mean, I've read through your website, 
but but I hadn't seen this material and um it is it is far more spiritual and and I'm fascinated that that there is that aspect to you that not only do you have the absolute I mean phenomenal research tools at your fingertips but but you have the spiritual stuff going on too which I think is really really cool by the way um so so where are you taking it? I mean, we all have to, you know, go one step beyond. I mean, frankly, you're you're far from, you know, ready to retire or or pass over or anything like that. So where <laughs> ne- where next are you taking this energy? You can't just constantly talk about Marcel Vogel. You have to you have to get you involved in in this and and and, and spin it even further. I, my 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 next question is when are you writing a book? But um it does feel like you know there. There's got to be something more here for you because you you've you've put together so much material. What are you going to now do with it? Oh, oh, I, I just had to I just had to do a brain dump of what I learned with Marcel and put it up on the <laughs> web, and so I don't have to think about it anymore, and and just be able to share it. And uh, and what I'm doing well, I was able to get Drew on the show with you here, so we're uh, we're broadcasting yes. out to millions yeah. of listeners that are. Uh, possible potential crystal researchers that uh, Marcel was way ahead of his time and he understood uh, he was able to measure and quantify so many things that having to do with consciousness and water and quartz that it kind of sets the groundwork for you know future scientists uh, you know my scientific research days are kind of like um, mm, yeah I been involved with alternative energy research and for 10 years and uh, flying around the planet meeting with different inventors and <laughs> zero point energy and things <laughs> like that but um that i essentially i'm done with that i'm just kind of enjoying my life and uh wanting to you know i i loved what drew said it was very very well put uh, i'm kind of in the same space i just you know, with my wife up here on the mountain, and we use the crystals uh, for our own personal, you know, work, and uh, I use it for, you know, visualization, and once in a great while, you know, we, we give it a whirl for healing, you know, mm-hmm. um, dust off the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dust off the uh, Vogel crystal, you know, but, uh, but I think, you know, just sharing information, I just like to see it, I would love to see the world get to the point where we understand that we're energetic beings that uh you know the the drug surgery radiation is something of a very primitive nature we don't understand the core that's related to consciousness and and our body like when i saw marcel dematerialize that tumor i knew that man had discovered that uh from the higher levels there's a an intelligence that's oscillating and that the 3D world that appears so solid to us is actually like a hologram, you could say. And, you know, the fact that it is a hologram, on one of the projects I worked on was the uh, Delaware camera. That's one of the major things I worked on with him and with two other scientists that it was a camera of the 1950s that... He brought over, and uh, what it was able to do, and it was patented by the European Patent Office, is it could take a photograph of somebody regardless of where they were. And, and I was very familiar with the radionic type of instrument designs, and this one had a time spiral where it could actually move the photographic image forward or backwards in the time. And, you know, if you can take a drop of blood and put it on uh, this plate, and this thing stood about five and a half feet tall, uh, get the oscillators oscillating, and it takes the energy and goes up to a cavity above, which reflects onto a photographic plate. Um, I remember the the first day we got the first pictures, Drew, and um, Mary was in the kitchen, and... (laughs) <laughs> and her comment was, well, it's not a very clear picture. It's kind of blurry. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she had no, no appreciation that, you know, here was something that is uh, being transduced from another dimension that's affecting the, the silver emulsion on the, on the film to, uh, to create a photograph. And, you know, George Delaware created the instrument. He did, 
tens of thousands of photographs. Uh, is, is, is that the one where, where somebody wanted to know how, how old the fetus was that they were carrying and he took a future picture of it? It's one example where he was looking at a woman that was 50 miles away and showing the, showing the fetus you know, in her. And he was able to move with a time spiral, different levels of gestation you know, through time. You know, it's really quite incredible when you think about it. As it does show there's this interrelation of this holographic uh, universe that we live in that uh, time and space is not exactly as we... Uh, fully comprehend, at least not in the regular schools <laughs> that people are, are trained. Um, so it, what we were attempting to do was to bring it, this was the ni- early 1980s, around 1982 or so, trying to bring it into um, current technology. This was built in the 1950s, and so we were trying to up the technology with it and make it functional. But it was very fascinating in that it, it definitely substantiated the reality that the universe is indeed, you know, holographic. Mm-hmm. Wow. I just, you know, he died in 91, I think, right? That's right. January of 91. Um, wow. Just imagine what he would have gotten involved in had he stayed around another 20 or 30 years. He had a mind that once he got a question in it, he would lock onto it like a pit bull. He wouldn't let up until he got the answer to that. He was he was relentless. And, uh, you know, when he was like 12 years old, he developed a laboratory in his backyard uh, that found out how a firefly, what the luminescence was of a firefly. And that led him into creating a... Uh, you know, vocal <laughs> luminescence company, but you know he was a he was a child prodigy. He had over 140 patents with with IBM. You know, creating coatings for hard drives and phosphors for televisions and liquid crystals. And the man was uh, the man was a genius. Oh, and no doubt, no doubt. I just I love the fact that he he incorporated all of the spiritual into everything that he did. And, you know, that, that, that is something that, you know, a lot of scientists today aren't doing. And it, it's, it's sad that they aren't taking a page out of his book because it, it so intensifies the quality of what you're able to do. Well, you know. toward the end, you know, they loved Marcel's creativity. He did. He made IBM, you know, millions of dollars. But you know, he uh, he eventually, uh, uh, you know, it was kind of heartbreaking what happened with him and IBM. So that's what evolved into, you know, Psychic Research Incorporated, where they actually gave him the uh, the uh, electron microscope that he he put together. Uh, I helped him uh, seeking out, because I worked for the Naval Electronic Engineering Center. I had access to all kinds of electronic stuff, and so I uh, got a spectrophotometer for him. And uh, he got, uh, from other grants, he got other pieces of equipment. And so it was a pretty, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time at the lab. I mostly worked with him at his home. Um, what prompt, I, what prompted him? What prompted him to start the psychic research development I would say it was a continuation of all the, you know, the work that he was doing on the side, like the, uh, the stuff, the material and the secret life of plants and things like that. Um, he, it, it came to kind of his playground, I think at the end, <laughs> making its way to get out of the house still, you know, say, and it was in the area that IBM was in. So, uh, but he, um, he had a gift for drawing people together. He had all sorts of people coming through there and uh, contributing ideas and things like that. And uh, Oh, he was a remarkably charismatic person. He was, what it was really brilliant at, I, I saw him speak several times, and then I've, I did uh, one of his workshops where he was teaching about his healing techniques and stuff, and he could take uh, some pretty complex things, you know, and uh, a long, complex train of thought, and he could hold people with you through the whole process, you know, so he could be talking for a half an hour or an hour, and you really got, he had a weight and uh, was able to take you from point A to point Z, really, 
and uh, keep you with him and, and so that you understood exactly what he was talking about. And he, he was very charismatic. You know, there was a certain weight to what he was saying that he was able to keep you engaged and uh, aware. And, you know, he was the point man for this uh, body of information, you know, and, and his personality and his um, expertise and his um, intuitive wisdom, I think, was what really brought it all together, you know, just who he was as a person besides his skill level. So that was rather brilliant, I thought, too. Well, yeah, obviously a man before his time. Um but he seemed to be able to get stuff out there in spite of the fact that, that you know, a lot of the population wasn't quite there with him yet. Um, he, he was on a couple of TV series. Um, he was on uh, In Search Of, where uh, I actually knew Dr. Ray Brown, who went into this pyramid and the Bermuda Triangle and brought out this crystal sphere that had this pyramids in it. It was inside this room with seven chairs around it with a rod coming down from the center of almost as though it was like a, the seven beings were have a conscious interface with this crystals being held in this pedestal. Wow. Uh, and he was doing some research on that. He also worked on the, uh, you know, the Michael Hedges skull, which is a large uh, a skull, as, you know, Drew could appreciate, you know, trying to, cut something like that out of a large piece of crystal and not, you know, go against the grain, so to speak. And uh, uh, he believed it to be a... See, he was a material scientist where he specialized in uh, in memory, in a way, uh, where you could record things and extract information, you know, like we do with the computers. And he applied this uh, to... Like the, the the skull, he believed the uh, older initiate was able to transfer his knowledge and wisdom into the crystal skull and then transfer it into the young adept that's just, you know, coming in. Uh, you know, it's just speculation, you know, is what his intuition was saying. But, uh, but you know, uh, we know little of the science of Atlantis, and there's probably a, a great vast of knowledge that uh, that was lost to mankind well probably as far as some of it goes it's a good thing it was lost um we we tend to weaponize so much stuff that comes at us that that uh it, it's maybe a good thing we we have lost some of that not the healing stuff that that is a sad loss obviously but um too much power with not enough intelligence is a scary thing. But you know, I'm 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 looking at at you know all of the potential that was there, and that his, you know, with with the crystals especially. I want to get back to programming them and the fact that they can be storehouses of wisdom, and 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 then relate it to our bodies. That in in my opinion, and it's just my opinion. I haven't heard anybody else spout this, so, so you know, I, I may be the only one thinking it, but but I truly believe that we carry within us um, our own um, hall of records, at least for our spirit that that is inside of us. So that, so that it's not a matter of looking for a room in another dimension that has all of the wisdom of time. We we have it inside of ourselves. We're carrying it inside of ourselves. And and accessing it is is something that is absolutely possible but not always probable with our thought processes. Um, it, it's sort of there for the taking if we can but get to the right place inside of ourselves to walk through that portal. Open the right door, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What they call the Akashic Records, basically, is what it sounds like what you're speaking about. Exactly. I think we have it. We all carry it. And, and it's just a matter of, you know, we're looking for it somewhere else and we're not paying attention to the fact that if we just got to know ourselves better, We'd have all that wisdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Mar Marcel knew. I mean, as I said before, he was a very devout Catholic. Christ was a very big 
factor, a big element in his life. And the, the love, the overriding love that that brought him is what really set him apart as a scientist. And the fact that he was willing to be humble and ask inwardly, I think, uh, you know, ask and receive, as we said earlier, that's that's a, a key element of what he was. And he was very tenacious, like Dan said. He had to get his mind on something and he wouldn't let it go, you know, so those, those were qualities. But uh, you had spoken just a moment ago about programming the crystal. Um, so that that's something that can be easily done if you if you have a crystal, you can... Uh, program it with whatever you choose uh, just simply by holding your right hand over the crystal and, and holding the thought and projecting it into the crystal and uh, Marcel had a breath technique for clearing crystals if you ever get to the, where you feel like your crystal needs to be cleared um, my wife and I tend to favor uh, putting a little salt wa- Salt. you can pour hold the crystal in your hand and pour a little salt on it and then rinse it under lukewarm water and just say a little prayer you know Father, please clear this crystal, or you know, however you relate to God or the universe and uh, spirit, and just cleanse it that way. You know, occasionally, uh, crystals can pick up if you know you're around a lot of negative energy, or you have negative people coming into your space. You know, you can clear them this way. It's a real simple way, and it works pretty effectively. But uh, you know, can you, you can, pendants can you... and things. You can will hold the charge. That's one of the crystals. That's uh, one of the aspects of crystals is they will hold a program they will hold that energy and um so you know whatever you choose to put in there is is the programming aspect of using a crystal will it pro can you program it with more than one program at a time oh certainly yeah they're you know they're they're really pretty unlimited um that's why we were talking earlier about you know cutting right hand versus left hand crystals you know and i I, my experience of them is they're very, uh, very sophisticated, very uh, uh, multifaceted, literally, in this case, uh, <laughs> very flexible, you know, in terms of how you can use them. Um, it really limited only by your imagination and, you know, how uh, you, you develop your personal way of doing things and your personal relationship. Marcel was the point man. He got this whole thing going, but now uh, it's up to us. You know, you mentioned us carrying it on. Well, it's up to us to find the new ways of working with the tools. And there, people come from many different spiritual backgrounds and uh, different ways of uh, other healing techniques and things like the Reiki, as I said, you know, and you find new ways of using the tools, incorporating your training and what your background is. And uh, it's kind of like music, you know, I mean, uh, Ten different people can pick up a guitar, but they're all going to learn to play it a little different way based on who they are and what they've heard and their life experience, you know, and they're all going to make different music with that. It's really the same with crystals. And I don't think it's meant to be all just one, you know, it's... Life isn't about conforming. Life is about creating and expressing the spirit and... uh I think that's an important aspect of working with the crystal, just asking and trusting what comes to you, and uh, you'll be led on how to use them. And, and um, it's the, the dance that we were talking about, the cosmic dance before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Um, it it will. It, it, it's 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 like like you have said before. It it is a tool, and it's an amazing tool. But but you have to be able to. Trust yourself to use it wisely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the tool, what I'm saying really, the tool is not the goal, okay? What is the goal? <laughs> What's the goal for yourself? Well, living a happy life and, and opening and knowing that you're connected with everyone and everything and being peaceful and being happy mm-hmm. and uh, li- living a quality life, you know, living your life the best that you can live it. And uh, giving, you know, being in up, knowing that giving and receiving are really the same thing, and and being in that place. So, the crystal is a tool for getting us to that place. So, the science, uh, you know, science didn't create God. God created science. So we need to always keep the, that perspective, that balance <laughs> with all of this, you know, and uh, know that the goal is really the God within you and the Christ within you or the Krishna within you or whatever, you know, however you relate to that. 
and um, this is a tool for opening those doors and healing those things, you know, the angers and the guilt and the shame and all the stuff that we've all taken on because we were raised in human families, you might say less than perfect human families, but that's what, that was our, that all creates our story and our song that we need to experience and heal in order to really, you know, sing our life more beautifully, you might say. Well, that's how we learn and grow. I mean, it, if you came down here and everything was always perfect, you would question what was the point of the lifetime. Um, right. But but I I think I I think that um, you know having this having this kind of tool or a kind or a tool of any kind that helps you to focus and to to um, in many ways manifest the magic that you have within is a wonderful thing and and it, it doesn't have to be a tool it doesn't have to be a crystal it doesn't it, it could be any form you want to make it but 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 having a way of, of focusing your energy and then allowing it to manifest through you through love um, mm-hmm. is, is a very very important thing and and everyone will do it in their own way in their own time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that but, uh, it, the crystal will amplify that, you know, as a tool, you know, one of the, the uh, we're talking about creating, focusing energy in a laser-like fashion, but it also amplifies the energy. So when you hold that, you hold that thought or you're doing your little healing ritual and you've got the crystal in your hand and you're sending it out into the universe, uh, you really feel the power of that. It's, it's an intuitive thing, but you really feel the focus and how that crystal is really amplifying that program essentially or that prayer that you're putting out into the world and and that is is a really powerful nice satisfying feeling you know uh, especially when you're you know it's a healing prayer for someone or some situation like the california fires or yeah. Vegas right, right. whatever it is happens to be that was for that week you know and you see you see it do you see the effect of this you know when, well it gives you validation too and and that's a that's an important thing for a lot of people it's a self-empowering um, experience, and uh, mm-hmm. what we were intended, I think that's what God intended us to be, you know, to manifest his power through us, each of us, you know, and so the, the crystal as a tool for that is a um, wonderful, you know, thing to have, so. Oh, I totally agree. I, I think that, that um, <clears throat> I mean, y- your crystals are just gorgeous. I mean, there's just, I mean, I've, and, and I've spent the last 50 years playing with crystals. So to get me drooling is really quite impressive. Um, <laughs> no, really. <laughs> it's curious, um, isn't it, how people are, are just drawn to crystals? I mean, all it is is a clear rock, right? I mean, but there's something... <laughs> Something, something more to it, you know. There, there is something people sense inside them, and it's definitely, as all masters have said, you know, the <clears throat> it's within you, and mm-hmm. the crystal is kind of like a reflection. Uh-huh. No, that is, that's true. That's but they do true. embody a certain state of consciousness in a way, and I think you that recognition is that you're recognizing that state of consciousness. Essentially, you know, it's it's creating that resonance in you, and it's it's a happy place. It is a happy place. What? I awesome. remember when I first saw a quartz crystal when I was in fifth grade. We had a science fair. This was in Madison, Wisconsin, and so I'd never seen quartz before. And one of my buddies had a, a big clear chunk in his his exhibition, and I was, I just saw that, and some part of me just went zing, you know, <laughs> what is that? And then it's so it's funny that I ended up cutting quartz, you know, kind of on a on a fluke. And uh, when I started cutting, I had, I don't, can't explain this, you know, past life, whatever, I don't know what it is, but I, I, we were cutting the quartz, and I I knew what it was supposed to look like in my mind's eye before we were even doing it, you know, I just, and uh, we developed the techniques, we improved on the techniques that Marcel Jr. taught, taught us. And uh, based kind of on that, my little inner hit about what they were really supposed to look like. So it's, it's kind of funny, you know, uh, this multi-dimensional, possibly past life. Don't really know what that's all about. But, uh, well, you know, I think you're a good example of what following your bliss can do to your life. Because um, if if you are following doing things that give you sheer, sheer joy, and and if you're mm-hmm. able to live your life that way. 
life takes on new meaning and a new vibrancy and 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 a new iridescence almost. Mm-hmm. And and you know there are a lot of people that are doing nine to five jobs in in little cubicles that that will never have the feeling that you've got. I think it's uh, more doing something that is, uh, it's like a service to me. Uh, yes, it's my living and I make money out and all that, but it's um, knowing that I'm doing something that's doing good in the world. You know, that's that's what I think is the satisfying thing. It's not always, you know, like I'm, I run into the shop and, oh, I get to cut crystals today. You know, it's not always <laughs> that kind of a thing, you know. But I, I do, there's this deep inner satisfaction. I send a tool out into the world and, and I know that my Marcel's happy about this. I just, I feel him around sometimes. It's like, yeah, okay, we're still doing it. And uh, I'll <laughs> send him out to Germany or I'll send him to Australia. I sent one to Abu Dhabi a few months ago. It's like, wow, this is going on all these parts of the world. And and uh, the, the what I was getting, my wife is a very psychic channel type, shaman healer type, and uh, we get that all these crystals are connected, you know, energetically connected all over the planet, and they all kind of communicate. They know what to do. They're communicating to each other, and they're they're creating this field of energy all over the planet, and that is a very satisfying thing to me. You know, it, to me, it's all God's work, and Marcel was doing God's work, obviously, mm-hmm. and that. That's that's the place where, where if you can get in your life where you feel like you're connected in that way, then I think then you can have a very satisfying, very happy life. You know, and that's um, it, you can't go to college and get that necessarily, or maybe you can. You know, maybe there's maybe you need to go study. And uh, but I I don't have that technological sort of a background maybe that Dan has or Marcel had in that sense, but I have a, a different sort of a thing, and we each find it in our own way. Well, so that didn't clutter your mind. Didn't clutter my mind. <laughs> Art and science work well together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> no, Mary absolutely. Used to, Mary Vogel used to complain because I was always singing when I was getting into the garage. Because <laughs> I play music too, and so it's all connected to me, music and the crystals. And uh, so I'd be singing away, you know, cutting in the back of their garage, and uh, she was always complaining, nicely complaining. <laughs> but it was funny. Well, I, I think both of you, in, in your own ways, have done him proud by getting his work out there, getting his research out there, getting his modalities out there for people to take a look at and, when comfortable, to to utilize them to enhance their own abilities. I think it's it's amazing. Dan, you've done research like, I, I you know, it would take me lifetimes to to do the kind of work that you've done and and drew your your crystals um there is an artist there for sure and scratch the surface barbara but uh, (laughs) drew why don't you give your website we're almost at the top of the hour and uh just so that Um, people know how to yeah my website is luminarystudios.com and or you can just do a search on my name drew towsley um one of the just in closing uh, character of Marcel, the people just, he was a big teddy bear of a guy. He was so kind and generous. And uh, he really was a wonderful guy. And uh, we Yeah, we miss him, don't we? all miss that part of it, yeah. Uh, he, was, he was so kind. I mean, he treated me better than his own kids in some ways. I mean, he co-signed a loan on my car. He built, bought me Christmas presents every year, bought me a radio bought me a toolbox, you know, and was always very supportive and very kindly and very generous, as I said. And uh, that was just uh, the spirit in him. He was a big teddy bear of a guy. He had teddy bears in his office, you know, and he just encouraged you. If you were in a bad mood, he'd just hand you a bear and say, here, give this hug. No, oh my. <laughs> and, uh, he was like a very kindly uh, grandpa, you know, in certain sorts of ways. And uh, that was an aspect that not everyone got to see. And I'm, I feel very fortunate in that I got to see that part Guys, of it. Guys, Dan, sure, it was great Drew, having you. Thank you both thank so you. much. This was a great show. Thank you.